Hey, it's Coach John. Well, let's talk about the infield. All right, we've got a number of positions in the infield and a number of different jobs to do. Funny thing is, they all rely on a similar skill set. Okay, we need to do a lot of anticipating, kind of figure out what trajectory the ball's heading in and how we're going to get there to cut it off. A lot of communicating, a lot of people and moving parts to work with in order to make things work. Today we're going to go through some drills that's going to help you understand those angles of movement and the very basic fundamentals of how to field a ball. As simple as it sounds, these same fundamentals are used every day by people who have been playing the game for 10 years or longer. Remember, infielders help make the pitcher good, make that diving play, that stop, and sometimes even save the game. Hi everyone, we're lucky enough today, it's Coach John, to have Madeline from Finesse Fast Pitch with us and she's going to go over some infield drills with us. She's got this pretty cool little thing in her hand here. You don't have to buy one, but I found that these are a pretty good tool in teaching girls how to focus and use their hands um, softly and have a great uh, concentration on fielding the ball. We'll show you how it's worked. So we're going to isolate and get on our knees. And what this does is this allows Madeline to just go ahead and focus on just the fielding aspect with the glove. It takes the upper part of the body off and it also takes uh, any type of fear. There's nothing wrong with going and hitting your, your daughter a whole bunch of grounders. Um, but if we're focusing on a technique, maybe the best way is to take the worry of a ball coming off the bat and just isolate the movements first and then we can progress to that. So Madeline's going to concentrate on pushing through the ball and drawing back up. Notice she's not absorbing the ball and she's not taking the ball underneath her body. She's pushing through the ball. Again, like all good players, she's focused all the way until she secures the ball. Now, if you don't want to buy a paddle glove like that, that's fine. Go ahead and do this barehanded. We're not rolling the ball that hard, and your daughter can easily get the same effect without having to deal with the glove. Speaking of the glove itself, now let's trade you. After your ball player gets a little more confident with securing the ball, gets a pair of soft hands and um, good concentration, now we start working with the actual mitt. So we'll start doing the same drill, just to get a feel for depth. Now everything you progress, and how hard you roll the ball, how fast, and the pace that you go, really depends on your individual ball player. You can tailor to their level and their learning expectations. <laughs> so it's pretty easy to see that Madeline's comfortable with this. So now we mix it up a little bit and we start transitioning to some very simple backhands. So we're going to roll the ball within her side. She's slightly uh, tilted towards the backhand side and she's going to hinge at the elbow and just pick these backhands off the glove. Notice that there's no smush in Madeline's glove when she picks this ball up. She's not trapping the ball and that's a common thing in young players. They'll smush the glove into the ground with the backhand. She's picking it clean, watching it all the way. Now Madeline's gonna go to the forehand. And it's simple, it's just a swipe. All right, now as we develop muscle memory, and understand exactly what we're trying to accomplish individually with isolated movements in the upper body, we can add the lower body. So, we're going to do what's called a one-step attack. Madeline's going to take one step attacking the ball and transition into a throwing motion. Understand how her feet move. They shuffle, they move quickly, and she's very athletic to the ball.
Oh, just like we isolated when we were on our knees, now we can move to the backhand and we can move to the forehand. Watch Madeline's feet, they never stop moving. She's always in a position to throw with her body long before she retains the ball and gets there with her hands. Now let's go to the floor. Now let's point something out. Madeline finds a ball that's just out of her reach. She's going to side shuffle. She's going to make sure that her body gets into position in order to retain that ball and get into a throwing position by shuffling her body over. There you have it. A couple of simple drills that progress from isolating one part of the body into the entire pattern of movement of the body itself that not only your beginning infielder can train, but all the way through a very experienced player like Madeline can help progress and get better and keep those skills sharp. All right, so one of the big things as coaches and trainers that we talk about are patterns of movement. Sounds big and fancy, right? It's really not. It's just the expected movement that it takes to accomplish what you want to accomplish. Uh, some of your young infielders may not understand this, but if they see it, it might make a little more sense. So what we're going to do is a simple drill with Madeline that's going to be demonstrated where she doesn't take an angle to the ball and if that ball gets through, or if she does take an angle to the ball and she's able to make a play. We're going to do it both in the backhand and the forehand. So if there's a hard hit ball that's just out of Madeline's reach coming straight and she cuts straight across, it's a little difficult for her to get to that ball. She's a quick athlete, so that's not something that she would normally have trouble with, but that's not an angle she'd normally take either. Same ball with an angle. And it's an easy play. What Madeline did, we talked about earlier about anticipation, is read the ball off the bat, understood the pocket in the infield that it went to, and anticipated exactly where she needed to be to make contact with the ball. Let's try that again. Yeah, it's pretty safe to say that I'd lose a bet trying to get a ball past her if she didn't want me to. Now, I had Madeline freeze here, and I want to show you why. She fielded a backhand ball, and if you notice, she's retained the weight on the back of her back foot. There's a reason for this. If she stands straight up, doesn't stay low, and goes ahead and reshifts the weight before throwing, she'll have nothing on that throw. She's already deep in the hole, so it's going to be tough to make that throw to first, or even from second to first, without having some weight shift behind it. So it's really important for your athletes to understand that that angle gives them an opportunity to not just do one thing, field the ball, but get in a proper position to throw so you can execute the out. And that is the whole point. Well, let's try the forehand position. Now, I'm gonna have Madeline demonstrate a couple of things on the forehand here that could be interesting. It really depends what position you're playing and where you need to throw to is how she would react next. If she had to throw over here, she might do a drop step and turn her body completely around to make that throw, okay? Or if she had to throw next to her, she might just be able to pivot her body at the torso and make that throw. So we'll give her a couple of balls and she can simulate each one of those. Notice Madeline uses her flexibility to her advantage, even if it's just a short throw to second base, so she can get the ball there without having extra steps, which is wasted movement. Wasted movement means there's more time for the runner to get down the first baseline and reach space safely. Now we're going to have Madeline demonstrate a drop step. A drop step's useful if you barely get to a ball, but you need to shift weight and direction quickly in order to make a play.
Not only was she athletic enough to get the ball quickly, she kept her feet. And remember when we showed you how she was pushing off the back foot? Same scenario there. She ended up with her weight on the back foot and is able to make a strong throw. All right. I want to thank Natalie for coming out today. And again, some of these drills are very simple. But most athletes throughout the infield and throughout softball use simple, consistent drills to become better each day. They don't have to be complicated. All you have to do is put it away. I hope you enjoyed this latest video from KT Mentoring. If you did, please make sure you hit the like button. And of course, share it with your friends and teammates. Now, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on our next great video. And again, thanks for training with us. Enjoy and keep working hard.